That is so cool. Hey there, buddy. All right, it's Tuesday, December 22nd at 10.55 p.m. I'm anchored in a very shallow cove and the tide is lower than normal. And if you look at the binoculars, the binoculars are perpendicular. My boat is turned that away. Fortunately for me, the tide just changed a few minutes ago and it's slowly going to be coming back up, but this is nerve-wracking. Like, like, it, it's hard to tell, but that's the mast. I'm trying to hold the phone. That's level. My phone's level, and that's the mast. So, it's going to be a long night. Fortunately, the winds are supposed to change in my favor. I need them out of the east. Bad. And high tide comes at 4 a.m. And there's a little over half a moon. So it's really bright outside. And I've been stuck here for 48 hours, so I, I know where the terrain is. I'm going to at least sail out further, closer to the channel and then drop anchor and wait for daylight and the east winds. Joy. But, this sucks, but a bad day sailing is better than any day in a Texas jail. Well, the end times are approaching just like storm clouds down the line. But it started raining
I'm getting kind of tired of being stuck here. So I'm going to air up my dinghy and row to shore. It's about two miles away. And I want to be sure to wear my life jacket. There's a rip tide current warning. And I'm going to take that very, very seriously. Wish me luck. And it's pouring rain. God damn it. Clear up. Okay, got the dinghy in the water. It's a 400 pounds and four horsepower motor. Got my oars, got all my leads. Gas can's not relevant. I'm getting rid of it. It doesn't. I don't need it. My uh, engine comes to the one. And I took my old monocular out of here. It's a waterproof safe, so I got my cash and my keys and wallet. I'm gonna put my phone in here while I travel and a charger and of course a spare bottle of water. Just why not? And now see why I'm aground. Freaking rudders out. Out of the water but that's what my little boat looks like from here and these these dinghies are so cool i've never been on one like this just put them all together and you sit there and row 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 your boat so i got about two miles i'm gonna head that way and then that way <laughs> i ain't gonna lie this thing's a workout Not as efficient as a kayak or a canoe. And it's taking some getting used to the coordination. If I get off course, having to correct. And sometimes I go backwards and sometimes I go forwards. And I ain't even gone five minutes. It was a hell of a workout. And these things just fold up so, so cute. And there's the boat. And here's me just floating into the wind. Nice day though. Better than it was this morning with all that rain. Okay, I had to take a break. I made it about a third of the way. Holy crap, that is back breaking. This is called the, the Spoil Islands of the Indian River. Lagoon Aquatic Preserves. It's maybe an acre big. It's probably the tiniest island I've seen. And I'd go for a little hike, but I got my water shoes on and it's hurting my feet, but my back hurts worse, so I'm resting. This is so cool. Never thought I'd be doing this. Found some dudes that sold me a half a quart of gasoline for five bucks. Best purchase I ever made. There's barely a few drops of gas left. But I made it from... Oh, across there. That was a hell of a lot harder trip than I thought. But, made it to the shipyard. So... Three hours I was gone. I come back in half... Fucking dinghy is popped. But thanks to Mike, let me borrow his foot pump. See where the leak is and get it all filled back up. Got some groceries and some electronics and some charging stuff. I've got some really cool neighbors that I've just met. And just like that, they said, man, just use our dinghy. So I got their dinghy. It's older, but bigger than mine and it looks like I'm going slow trips but there's no way in hell I could have rode all the way. I've only been gone about five minutes. Probably got another 15 to go. There she is. Hello beautiful. I'm coming. Okay finally made it back. Got my engine compartment open. Picked up this bad boy. Called the Rugged Geek. Intelliboost. 
RG2000 Sport. It's got these cool jumper cables. It's got all kinds of, it's got a little light on it, USB stuff. There's another charger. You can either charge it from the wall, or you can charge it from your phone or your, your vehicle, 12 volt. But I'm going to get it hooked up to the starter and see if I can get this bad boy started, the, my main engine. Because I've got about 30 minutes till high tide and I'm going to need every inch of water I can get. God dang it worked! Started on the first try. Hell yeah! All right, it's Christmas morning, about 3 a.m., and I'm in this cove still, and the wind is out of the northwest, and I'm in the ICW, and it's pushing me further to shore. I mean, I'm not in any immediate danger, but. Wow, this is a rough ride. Like it's ringing my little bell over there. It's like I'm in, tide's down, so it's like probably two and a half feet of water. But the waves are like crashing over the boat. <laughs> and this is wild. Morning. Good Merry Christmas. I survived. That was a hell of a storm. And it's freezing cold now. Not quite freezing, but for Florida it's 37. And I got my little Mr. Heater here. And the storm just tossed shit all over the place. And wow. I got to sleep a couple hours. And then I passed part of the storm. Waiting on the tide to come in. Talking to Hayden. That was really nice. And um... Uh, I only managed to lose, I think, a water bottle. I got everything out of the dinghy. I even started the engine. Bay. I left the little portable engine on the dinghy. And like on the fifth or sixth try, it fired right up. So I let it warm up and burn any water it might have collected in there. It's nice. So I got all the decks somewhat sorted out. The, cabin's just a wreck but I don't care about it because it's just not it's not going anywhere so I'm trying to wait on the window die down and I'm turned perpendicular to the wind now I'm gonna get the dinghy turned over get it all cleaned out get the motor back on it I've got 200 feet of rope road on each anchor I'm gonna haul a mast out as far as I can go Get them set and see. I don't know. See what I can do. I did manage to move forward 100 feet and backwards 100 feet. I basically dug a trench. And I could tell because by the time I got to the end of each side, it goes. Put it in reverse. Back and forth and back and forth. So I'm floating a little better, but it's only because I'm in my own homemade trench. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, I'm still not gonna have to call a tow boat. Might have to, I don't want to, and I'm not in a bind, so I really don't care to. I'll just stay here as long as I have to. I've got gasoline now and a little dinghy, and I can go back and forth, and get supplies if necessary. me hits on the starboard side and the port side is just damn near in the water and it's maybe it's maybe a foot out but occasionally it gets up really really close I've got my anchor up front nothing in the back it's not spinning me around So, I've got all my valuables 
really expensive valuables in the Pelican case. And I've got my life jacket on in case this sucker rolls. And this is going in the case right now. Okay, it's uh, 7 o'clock on Sunday morning, uh, the 27th. Uh, the Cito guys there in Fort uh, Pierce, they totally screwed me, like totally screwed me, like took my $600 and I could tell they just said get out of here, but they even got stuck. I don't understand why they, I told them I've got a three and a half foot draft, I'm in three feet of water, send help, and they sent another boat with three and a half foot draft and they couldn't do anything so they stole my money and I put them on blast on Facebook and that's okay but I've started this kedging method I didn't even know kedging was a thing and I've got I'd already had my anchor out there I hooked it up to my halyard last night pulled it over normally my mask falls over during low tide at night and it didn't fall over this time it stayed up the sand filled inside the void underneath me and I can feel myself, I'm doing a slight, slight bounce. My boat is slightly, slightly bouncing. So I've got about 20 more minutes for high tide. I don't know how this is gonna work. I don't know if it's gonna work. I know I'm still stuck, but I'm higher now than I have been since I've got here as far as, it, it's only by a couple of inches, but I've got the wind sort of in my favor or better than it was. And the engine's running, batteries are charged and Cheers, here's to hoping Poseidon blesses me on this one. Okay, I've got my halyard drawn up to my anchor, which is one end's on the bow of the boat. The other end is out there. I've got my main mast hoist hooked up to my dinghy and pulled just as hard as I can pull it. I can't pull it any harder. I've at least got a couple hundred pounds worth sticking out on an arm that's probably five feet six feet from the center of my boat it's hard to see from here but I am tilted over at least a few degrees during the night when I went to sleep my bow was anchored there now my bow is pointing or pointed there and I kept tension on my anchor all night long so it did pull me out some, not a lot. Degrees wise, that's maybe 15 degrees, 10, 15 degrees. But the dirt underneath me moved, or the boat moved over the dirt. So the ditch that I was in is over here. If I'm in a ditch, which I, I think I still am, obviously, because I'm not moving. I've given it full throttle. The wind is out of that direction, the north. The app says it's coming out of the northeast or east northeast, but it, it never did. It never changed. It may later, but high tide, the minute mark was about 10 minutes ago. And so it's, some say there's a delay from Fort Pierce readings to over here of 20, 30 minutes. I don't know, but I've still got it low idle, but in forward gear. And I've, I'm, I'm moving slightly, but it's not significant. But I'm moving in that direction towards the open water more where I want to be versus that direction which is where I don't want to be. I don't want to be over here. I am over here. It's progress. Okay, took this line here. That's the end of my anchor and I went to the front. I can't record it because I don't want to lose my phone. And I've been bouncing it and bouncing it and bouncing it. I don't know that I've turned any far angle this way like I did overnight from here to here, but I can tell by lining up to the tree line, I moved a little, and again, a little's not much, but a little means I've moved. I've got it in full forward. When I woke up this morning, my, my uh, rudder was stuck right in the middle, but now I've got almost full motion. I'm going all the way one way and almost that way. So I don't know what else to do but just keep trying and I'm going to get it. Ok, 
Okay, I'm still technically at high tide, although it's not coming in anymore. It's going to be very shortly going back down. There's the shore where I don't want to be. That's higher, or I'm sorry, higher sand, which is shallower water. That's where I want to be. The mast, if I can hold this steady enough, is tilted this way slightly. It's hard to get it in the camera angle, but it is tilted, which is the way I want it. Again, when I went to sleep last night, early this morning, my bow, this center line, was looking at that. Right at that, there's a, there's a, a, a piece of the land that sticks out there. And this morning, after keeping my halyard tied to my anchor, which is out there, I'd say 100, 120 feet maybe. I've got the other end. It's loose now, but I have it on my cleat and I've been yanking on it up and down and up and down, making making the, the boat rock. And what it did overnight is as it was rocking with that tension on it, the sand is filling up. And I think that's the only reason I'm not still way over here because again, it's hard to tell from the camera, but in reality, the distance from this front of my boat to right there where it was to aim, that's at least 15 feet. To me, that is very, very significant to move a 14,000 pound boat 15 feet just by using, utilizing leverage and an anchor. So, a lot of my critics are calling me a whiny bitch and I think it's hilarious because I'm actually not whining. I'm holding assholes like uh, the, the, the branch of uh, sea tow accountable for you know if it's one thing if you can't help me i admittedly i told them i don't have the 2500 3000 bucks that they said it could cost i don't have it i was up front with them i mean if it's one thing if you can't help me if it's going to cost that say dude you're just i'm sorry maybe call the coast guard or I, I just i can't i can't have my guys working out there all night for can't pay the three grand that's fine but to take the 600 bucks after i deliberately told the guy <laughs> that i was in three feet of water and his boat shows up he's got a three and a half foot draft himself and he gets stuck and to take my 600 bucks after pissing over the side of his boat you know if it's it doesn't bother me personally because we're both dudes and i've done it myself in the field a thousand times but at least i knew the guys i was working with and i had some little bit of discretion about it he had no idea if, I, if London was in the, or if I had a girlfriend or he didn't know if, if there's any women there at all. And it's just, it's just really crude. Uh, Treasure Coast, uh, Sea Toe. Yeah, don't recommend y'all. Never use y'all again. I'm not mad at Sea Toe themselves, the franchise, the, or the, the, the overall group. You know, they didn't know necessarily. But anyways, this exercise is helping me mentally because from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed I'm thinking about new ways and every time I go to sleep I thought well I've thought it all through and there's nothing else I can do and when I wake up and I've done my research I get a new idea at the moment I think I'm out of ideas but it never fails the last five or six nights I've been here when I wake up or during the day I'm thinking through this I come up with another idea I don't know what the next idea is going to be but I love the thinking exercise. This is the best recovery I could possibly ask for, for parental alienation and the bullshit treatment from the family court. If you're suffering from depression or anxiety and anything that is harming you, maybe sailing's not your thing, but I can just firsthand vouch for sailing. This is working for me. <laughs> if you can try it, it's not that expensive and yes you're gonna screw up a lot but I'm on a boat in the middle of the ocean during a pandemic away from everybody yes I'm stuck but god dang I'm happy this is fun now I've got some real measurements we're about two hours past high tide and I took my dinghy out didn't even have to start the motor I just were so shallow I used that pole and I pulled my way with my other spare anchor. And I stood over here. Let me go up there. Uh, 
at my bow. Yes, I know I'm barefooted. I'm not supposed to be, but it's not like I'm going anywhere. It's not like it's bad weather. It's warmed up so nicely. So, right now, halyard is anchored to right there. I don't know if y'all can see it. There's a little line. It goes right there. Bow. I've run a pulley system. Hooked up a pulley right there and went over to one of my winches. Over this, well, just past the cleat, whatever. I don't know what you call that thing. Whatever that thing is. And routed it all the way out. Okay. Here is where water line is of the first anchor there's the water line at the second anchor but since I'm so much further down and not pulling up here at the mast I'm from where that enters the water that is up to my uh, sternum and I measured my sternum when I got back and it's 48 inches on the dot so that a mere hundred feet is four feet of water my anchor road goes out at least another 30 feet maybe or more past that I moved 15 feet last night from here bow my boat move at least 15 feet there so now I've got my winch hooked up here I can throughout the day we're going into low tide and so as during the cycle of low tide and then back up to high tide tonight is around 7 p.m. I'll have to look for sure I'm going to take the advantage of the rocking and keep tension on it Pull on this one a little bit, pull on this one a little bit, pull on this one a little bit, pull on this one a little bit. And all I have to go is 100 feet during high tide and I'm in four feet of water with a three and a half foot draft. And I'm super freaking stoked about it. Thank you so much to all my Facebook friends whom I've been posting tidbits of my story for your information, your links, your experiences. It really, really, really is helping out a lot. I am going to have to get myself a hard bottom dinghy, the one that my new friends let me borrow. This is so cool. I'm rigging up a thing on the front end, a, 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 a fender that I've got that's full of air. But I'm having, and I did all the rope tying up top, but it wasn't quite right and I needed to adjust. So instead of getting having to get in the water, I just pull my happy ass around here. Voila! And now I can show you what I'm. Whoop, there I go. Almost got ahead of myself. I've got rope tied off there to the front of this thing. This thing's full of air. I've got a rope going up to the side there and one to the other side. I pulled up kind of tight on that one. And now. Get my happy ass back around this side. And I've got the other rope coming up here that I've happened to have a spare hoist, a rope hoist. I can't do it with the camera, but all I'm gonna do is tighten up on this more and pull that bag up underneath there. And I know it's not a lot of weight compared to the boat, but. If, it, if I can just get a couple hundred pounds off the way to the boat, it'll be worth it. But yeah, this little dinghy, this thing's cool. Like, I can surf in it. Like, it's just so cool. I'm being so nerdy. I'm <laughs> having so much fun. I got the exact desired result. Right now, it's still sticking up a little bit out of the water, but the lower blue line is the water line. And I'm at least three or four inches below that. And I'm at low tide. So at high tide, I can't point because I'm holding on for dear life. Don't want to drown in two feet of water. But I was able to pull on my hoist. And it doesn't look like it's tied, but believe me, I don't know. Tie, see if I can tighten it up some more. Okay, it, I was able to, okay, I got it. Better. So I've got like a bikini on it, and as the water level rises this afternoon or tonight, it's going to be dark whenever the tide comes in. But I think I'm, 
I'm going to at least try to get out. But that little balloon, even if it's only 100 pounds it takes off, that's better than nothing. I'm, I'm to the point now, every 